Welcome to the 17th lecture in Abstract Algebra. The topics that we will explore in this lecture include subgroups, centralizers and normalizers, and an introduction to cyclic groups. Okay, so we have now seen that a group is part of major algebraic structures to include rings, fields, vector spaces, and entire algebras. And along the way, we have looked at some elementary properties of groups. We will now begin to focus on group theory. And in this lecture, we begin with subgroups. And so, new definition. Let G be a group under some binary operation. And let H be a subset of the underlying set G, then H is a subgroup of the group G, and this is denoted using this notation, the same uh, notation for less than or equal to, but in the context of group theory, this is read H is a subgroup of the group G. So H is a subgroup of the group G, if and only if. H is itself a group under the same operation as in the group G, and we refer to this as the induced operation. So if H is a subgroup of the group G and H, the underlying set H, is a proper subset of the set G, we write H less than G and this is read H is a proper subgroup of the group G. So let's look at some examples. So let the set G together with the binary operation star be a group. Then the underlying set G and the set containing the identity element only are subgroups of the group G. So proof, the set G is a subset of itself where the group G is a group and so G is a subgroup of itself. The set containing the identity element is a subset of the set G and it is in fact a proper subset of the set G where identity star identity is identity which is once again in the set containing the uh, identity element only. Now E star the quantity E star E is the same as the quantity E star E star E, which is identity star identity, which is once again identity. And so the operation is associative over the set containing the identity element alone. Clearly, the identity element is in the set which contains it. And further, the identity element is its own inverse. And so the set containing the identity element alone is a group under the same operation as in the group G. 
And so, reading. Set containing the identity element is a proper subgroup of the set G. Now I've used the term proper subgroup. So let's now define some terms related to subgroups. So once again, let G be a group. The set G itself is the improper subgroup. of the group G, all other subgroups H of G, where H is not the same as the entire set, are proper subsets. Oops, proper subgroups. The set containing the identity element alone is the trivial subgroup of the group G and all other subgroups. are non-trivial subgroups. So let's look at some examples. Let H star be the set of quaternions without zero. C star, the set of complex numbers without zero. R star, the set of reals without zero. And Q star, be the set of rationals without zero. Then H star, C star, R star and Q star are all groups under multiplication Now since the set Q star is a proper subset of R star, which is itself a proper subset of C star, which is itself a proper subset of H star, we have that Q star is a proper subgroup of R star which is a proper subgroup of C star, which is in turn a proper subgroup of H star. Now recall that the uh, quaternions, the non-zero quaternions under uh, multiplication is a non-Abelian group, whereas the subgroups we have listed here, the uh, non-zero complex numbers, the non-zero reals, and the non-zero rationals under multiplication are Abelian groups. So next example, the integers, the rationals, the reals, the complex numbers, and the quaternions are all groups under addition
where the integers is a proper subset of the rationals, which is a proper subset of the reals, which is a proper subset of the complex numbers, which in turn is a proper subset of the quaternions. And so the integers is a proper subgroup of the rationals, which is a proper subgroup of the reals, which is a proper subgroup of the complex numbers, which is a proper subgroup of the quaternions, all under addition. Now, from this point forward, we will use the convention that for an arbitrary group, we will use the notation of a multiplicative group, especially when it is not known whether or not the uh, group is abelian. So next we will prove a lemma. So let G be a group. And let H be a subset of the set G. Then H is a subgroup of G if and only if. The following three conditions are satisfied. The set H is closed under the same operation as in the set G. And again, we will use uh, the notation of a multiplicative group. So for every element A and B in the set H, we must have that a times B is in the set H. The second condition that must be satisfied is that the identity element must be in the set H. And third, for every element in the set H, the inverse of that element must also be in the set H. So proof. Suppose that H is a subgroup of the group G, then the set H is a group under the same operation as in the group G. So for every two elements A and B in the set H, we have that the product A times B is once again in the set H. The identity element is also in the set H. As H is a group, it is also a monoid. And for every element A, oops, A in the set H, the inverse of that element is also in the set H, as H is a group. So conversely, suppose that H is a subset of the set G such that conditions one through three hold, then by condition one, H is a magma So let A, B, and C be any three elements in the set H. Then, as H is a subset of the set G, and G is a group, it is a semigroup. And so we have that A times quantity, B times C, is the same as the quantity A times B times C. 
So the operation is associative over the set H. So by condition two, the identity element is in the set H, and so H is a monoid. And by condition three, H is a group, and hence H is a proper, rather H is a subset of this group G and is itself a group under the same operation as in G, and so H is a subgroup of G. So we will now use this lemma to prove a theorem. So let G be a group, and let H be a non-empty subset of set G, then H is a subgroup of G if and only if for every two elements A and B in the set H, A times B inverse is in the set H. So proof. Suppose that H is a subgroup of G then for every element A and B in the set H A times B inverse is also an H as H is a group and to clarify as H is a group, for every element, its inverse is also uh, in the set H. And as H is a group, it is closed under the same operation as in the set G. And so the product of an element A and the inverse of an element B is also in the set H. So conversely, Suppose that H is a non-empty subset of the group G such that for every element, every pair of elements A and B in the set H, we have that A times B inverse is also in H. Then we have that A times A inverse, which is the identity, is an H. This is uh, application of this property with the condition that A equals B. So since we have that the identity and an element A are in the set H, Identity times the inverse of A, which is the inverse of A, is an H. And so for every element A in the set H, its inverse is also in the set H. And since we have that for every element A and B in the set H, A and B inverse, B inverse is in the set H, and hence a times the inverse of B inverse, which is A times B, is in the set H. That is, the set H is closed under the same operation as in the group G. This is a set which contains the identity element, and uh, for every element in the uh, set H, its inverse is also in the set H. So by the previous lemma, H is a subgroup of the group G.